also just say that there's, there's greetings um, from Midland, uh, prayers for you guys, pray for Pastor Spoo and the work that he's always involved in. Um, he's an older brother to me from, from a distance without him knowing, um, so sometimes you don't want to put pressure on older brothers to say, well, baby, so you better be careful how you live because we're taking cues. Um, from you, but but he's, a, he's such an inspiration, um, and his heart for 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 the gospel, particularly to reach the township, has been a blessing to me, inspiration to me. Um, I was born and raised at Timbisa, and just to see that there's men who are faithfully fighting the good fight, um, so that the word of God could reach all people. Right? When we read the Bible in Revelation, it says that there'll be people groups from every nation. Um, from every tongue and so the question that we ask is where will those people be if we don't go get them um, and so I, I'm very appreciative for the fact um, that God is using him and his family um, and you guys to impact uh, this, uh, the, the township of Imami Lord so I, I'm, I'm very grateful for that um, and uh, I'm going to pray as we get into God's word this morning it will be of great help for me if you would keep your Bibles open uh, to Ephesians 5 That's where we're going to be spending most of our time uh, this evening. So let's bow our heads and let's thank the Lord um, for the reading of his word um, earlier on. Lord Jesus, we are grateful that you are an incredible gift to us, um, that you gave with your life, uh, you gave uh, with your obedience to the Father, a life that we failed to live, that you lived on our behalf and you ultimately took the death that was so rightfully ours, but you took it upon yourself. And so we are here this morning in great thanksgiving to you for that. And we pray that as you speak to us through your word, that I may decrease and that all of us as disciples equally sitting at the foot of the cross would see you and that we would walk out of here being reminded of the joy of believing, the joy in our salvation, the joy of being creatures who are new. So we pray that you would do this for us. Holy Spirit, work in our hearts and open up our ears and eyes so that we may see Jesus for who he truly is. In your wonderful and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. So I would ask, uh, what makes a good song? We are speaking about singing this morning as you saw from our passage earlier on that was read in Ephesians 5. So I would ask you this morning, uh, what makes a good song? Um, There would be a a number of ingredients that make a good song. Many things make up a good song. Uh, But one particular thing that I would want to draw attention to uh, is the soul behind a song, the spirit behind a song. Uh, What is undergirding a particular song, the the spirit or the heart or the soul of a song, the worldview, what's underneath a particular song, what carries it. I think that's that's a very important ingredient. Um, And we know that as South Africans, as Abantabamnyama, we know that intuitively. um, We we have this thing about us as South Africans uh, in in how we sing and how we make music. Um, And it's it's a, a very interesting and a, and a, and a keen um, uh, thing, a desire for us. Uh, where in, in most of our music, uh, we tend to long for the presence of God. Um, as you hear gospel music that's made by South Africans, or even if you hear South Africans singing, uh, there's just this keen or, or very unique interest that we have, uh, a desire for, for the presence of God. If you're confused, let me, let me just paint this a little bit clearer. Um, I think about your uncle who leaves the tavern or the shopping at, at uh, 12 a.m. Uh, who is he singing at the top of his lungs? Rebecca Malou. Right? Um, okay. right, thanks to a brother who said amen here. The rest of you are clearly my 2000. <laughs> but for us who grew up with uncles who drank, you would hear him walking down the street that we had tavern. Singing with Rebecca Malupe, word for word, they knew exactly all the lyrics. There's just something about us as South Africans where we sing because we long for the presence 
of God. Again, if, if you don't believe me, think about the wedding you're going to go to now in December, Elimpo, uh, when your cousin is getting married. They're probably going to play a Soli Muhulo song, or Winnie Mashaba, or maybe they're going to play Usoli Mashang. Um, but that's who we are as South Africans. In our music, we, we long for, for the presence of God. I don't know what it is about it. Uh, I'm not here to argue whether that's right or wrong, but there's something about us and the way we sing or the way that we make music. Think about the many spring cleaning sessions you had. If there's any black mothers out there, hey, Miss Limazi, in a spring cleaning, I <laughs> uh, tortured us. But what kept us going uh, when we were spring cleaning? What was playing in the background? Joy celebration. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> spirit of praise that's what keeps you going thinking oh, no, but you're there um, and by the end of it you know every single lyric by your celebration or whatever it is that was playing in the background think about our own national anthem it's a prayer Africa God bless Africa to hear our prayers to protect our nation our very national anthem has this very keen sense or interest that we desire for the presence of God I don't know what it is it's probably a blessing from God that he wired us as South Africans in that way uh, he's given us that in our DNA go anyway taxi rank at a funeral at Taven, school assembly graduation ceremony a wedding buying your first car, whatever it is, there will be gospel song playing there, or we will sing some form of gospel song as South Africans. It's just in our DNA, it's who we are. Amen. 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 I clearly there's one or two believers. Amen. 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 I, um, and that's true of us as South Africans, but I think it's much more truer, if that's even a word. It's even much more clearer um, for us as Christians. If you are a Christian, you are a singer. And we'll see that uh, as we get into the passage. Um, But I just want to make this distinction that because we are Christians, not primarily because we're South Africans, but because we are Christians, we should be singers. We should sing. Uh, One, already, it's already wide in our DNA as South Africans, but even much more as those who profess to believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I think it's very important for us to make that very clear distinction. Some of us sit here and we think, well, we sing just because we're black. We sing just because we're African. We sing just because, again, I've painted the picture. This is who we are. It's in our culture. It's in our DNA. And amen and amen, and that's true. But that's not why we sing. We sing primarily because we are Christians. We sing primarily because of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We clap, we sing, we dance, we make a noise and shout for the Lord because that's what the Bible commands us to do. Amen. Amen. Right, the Bible tells us we shall love the Lord with our strength, our hearts, our soul, and our mind. That's all of who we are, our mind. That's our thoughts. We will sing to the Lord with our hearts. We will sing to the Lord with our soul. That's our emotions. That's, that's our ambitions. That's where our will is. But we'll sing to the Lord as well with our strength because that's our body. We give our body to the Lord. And so, yes, we'll sing as South Africans. Yes, we'll sing everywhere. It's wider than us. But Mzalwana, what more of you who believe in Jesus? You sing because this Bible tells you to sing. You sing because you have a reason more than any other South African in this country to sing. You belong to the King. You belong to Jesus. You have a new life. You have light in you. And so we sing. We sing because we are Christian South Africans, not because we are South African Christians. There's a clear distinction I'll say there. We sing because we are Christian South Africans. We don't sing because we are South African Christians. The adjective takes preference over the noun. We are who we are because of Jesus, not because we're born black, not because we're born in South Africa. We are who we are and we have value and we matter because of what Jesus has done for us. And that gives us reason to sing. Amen. Amen. We should be singing. If There's no reason for you to keep quiet. Yes. Yes. 
we'll, we'll get there. There's hope in Christ. <laughs> There's hope in grace. <laughs> so, so what's according to Ephesians 5, verses 15 till 21? There's two reasons why we sin. And I'll unpack those two reasons for us. The first reason is we sin because of life. That's verses 15 to 18. And then the next reason we sing because of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving because of this life that God has given us in Christ. But secondly, we sing because of the life that we have with one another as Christians. Amen. Mm -hmm. Um, And so in the middle is verses 19, which I believe is the heart of this passage. Uh, Verses 19 then speaks about what kind of songs we need to sing. Speak about how we actually sing. Speak about the core reasons of why we sing. But Paul brackets that. Uh, with these other two reasons, verses 15 till 18 and verses 20 till 21. We sing because of life and we sing because of thanksgiving. Um, let me give us a, a bit of context to, to kind of fast track us on what is happening here because we opened chapter 5. So it's obviously uh, four chapters before that. Uh, what is Paul doing in this letter to the Ephesians? Well, in the first three chapters, uh, Paul is writing to them to address how they got saved. He, he basically unpacks what the gospel is for them from chapter 1 till chapter 3. And then for the other three chapters, he says, because now that you are saved, this is how you're supposed to live. So verse chapter 1 till chapter 3, this is how you're saved. Chapter 4 till chapter 6, this is how you live because you are saved. Uh, and a key thing Paul says is one of the things that you need to do because you are saved is to sing. You have to sing. You are called to sing. It's part of who God has made you and called you to be. It's in your DNA as a Christian. You are a singer. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are a singer. You are a singer. We, we sing as an expression or an outworking of our salvation. Right? When, when Paul tells us in, in Philippians 2.12 that we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, Paul again would say here, yeah, part of what that working out is, is to sing. We need to sing uh, as Christians. There's a Zimbabwean proverb that says, if you can walk, you can dance. If you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. If you can talk, you can sing. What is this proverb trying to remind the Zimbabwean people of? That they don't need to do things perfectly. You don't need to have the most amazing voice. You don't need to have the most amazing dance moves. If you just have the basics, if walking is movements, then you can slightly tweak those movements and turn them into a dance. If singing is words and, 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 and sounds, then you can slightly tweak those words and sounds and you can sing. And so Paul is calling us here, or God is even reminding us this morning, that he has not called you to be a a record-breaking, Grammy-winning, South African Music Awards singer. That's not what he's called you to. If he's called you to be that in your personal life, but for us, as a body, as a church, what has he called us to? He's called us to be disciples. He's called us to be followers. He's called us to be sons and daughters and children. He's called us to be believers, to be Christians. And he says, the biggest part of how you show that he has called you to be all these things that I've mentioned is that you don't shut your mouth. You sing, Zalon. You sing. If you are a follower of Jesus and you've accepted him in your heart, there's no reason for you to keep your mouth shut. You need to sing. Um, and we'll get more reasons for why he does that. But, but pause here and think about this. H- hasn't God been good in your life? H- hasn't, hasn't God done things in your life where you realize if it wasn't for him, the situation would not have changed? Hasn't God showed up in ways that no one else in your life has shown up? Amen, somebody. Hasn't God been there? Right? When, the, when the storm was rough, yesterday we were all at the man's conference and we were speaking about having joy in the storms of life. And some of the stuff that those pastors shared up front was so crushing, very vulnerable. But yet they could have joy in the midst of the storm because God has been faithful to them. Amen. Amen. And if that is true in your life, there's no reason for you to be quiet. You need to sing and praise this Lord. You need to shout uh, all the praises. If again, as we read earlier on when the service started, if the moon and the stars and the sun sings unto the Lord, when you have breath in your lungs, you have words, you have movement, 
Why restrain all of that when God has blessed you with so much around you and God has kept you? There's no reason for us to keep quiet. We need to be singing praises to the Lord. We need to be shouting praises to the Lord. And not only just to Him. As we sing and we shout, we're singing unto each other as well. Uh, And there's an encouragement that happens there. Some of us walk in here, I don't know your hearts, you don't know mine, only God knows our hearts. But there might be a lot of things that you're carrying in there. And you're walking in with a heavy heart. And as we sing to each other, we encourage each other. We soften those hard hearts. We ease some of those pains that we walked in with. You might not even be able to sing out loud, but you can sing in your heart. And as your brothers and sisters sing around you, there's something that happens there in your heart. Music is like water. It goes into the crevices of our souls that most things can't get into. Not even your psychologist or your therapist or your bae or your ex bay. Anyway, but we're not there, right? <laughs> but nothing can get into your heart as easily as music can. And that's how God designed it. It goes into parts of your heart that you sometimes keep hidden from the world around you. And God makes music to crack those parts, to come massage those parts that are hard. Hearts that are sometimes even going dead and need revival in our hearts. So we need to sing Mazalon. Even if you sing, and then Yabimba, just, just know that your brother or your sister needs it. You don't know what they're going through. We're not just ministering as we stand here. Even as we sing out there, we are ministering to each other. Unless the Holy Spirit uses music to get into our hearts and to help us and minister um, to each other. So again, turn to your neighbor and say, if you're a Christian, you are a sinner. (laughs) God hasn't called us to to be talented again. This this is not just even a a New Testament principle, but we see it throughout the Bible. Uh, This is part or woven into what redemptive history is. If you go to Exodus 9, you don't have to turn there. Exodus 9 verses 1, you can write it down. Um, But you've probably heard this. If you've been to any good Sunday school, you know the story. Uh, And the word of God says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And so God sends Moses to Pharaoh to tell Pharaoh to let his people go. Why? So that they can go serve him. The NIV says, so that they can go worship me. Verses 1 of chapter 15, a couple of uh, uh, chapters later, and then the word of the Lord says, Then Moses and the people of Israel sang the song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord. He has triumphed gloriously. The Lord is my strength, my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. And so clearly we see what happens here in chapter 9, verses 1. Moses is told to go tell Pharaoh to let the people go. In chapter 15, they are free. They finally have salvation. They finally go into the desert to go worship the, the, the Lord. What's the first thing they do? They sing. When they receive salvation, the first thing they do is they sing. They don't sit around thinking, hey, what are, what are we supposed to do now? But naturally, as the Spirit is walking in them, Moving in them, they respond in song. They sing to the Lord. So that's what we are called to do. Where there's salvation, there is joy. Where there is joy, there has to be singing. And so we need to be a singing people. We need to be marked by singing. We need to sing so much that these walls fall off and the rest of Mami Lodi joins us. We need to be a singing people because out of everybody else, in this country, we have more reason to sing. Paul speaks here of the life of a worshiper. Uh, why is it important for, for us to, to look at uh, the lives that, that we live? Um, so it's uh, I mean, Ephesians 5, if we go back there, uh, there's two reasons again that I said we sing. The first one is because of life. And the second one is to, to give thanks. So read with me verses 15 till 18 as we look at our first point. Why do we sing for life? I look carefully, I'm reading from the ESV, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time. Because the days are evil, therefore do not be foolish, but understand the will of the Lord. 
And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. So that word walk there in verses 15 means to live. And so Paul is saying to these Christians, you guys need to live. Again, chapter 1 till chapter 3, he's told them how they've got in life, what the gospel is, how they've been saved, how they've been moved from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's glorious light. And so now he's saying, you need to live. And so the natural question then after that is, how should they live? And Paul says in verses 15, live wisely. So live wisely. And after that, we should ask the natural question is, how, how should we live wisely? And he tells you in verses 16, make best use of the time. And then we press Paul even deeper. Paul, what does that mean? How do we make best use of the time? When he says we do that by being filled with the Holy Spirit. So live Live wisely? How do we live wisely? Make best use of the time. How do you make best use of the time, Paul? Well, by understanding the will of God. How do we understand the will of God? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's what he's saying here. And he says that kind of life has no other choice but singing will spring forth from that kind of life. A life that is lived wisely. A life that makes best use of the time. A life that understands the will of God. A life that is filled by the Holy Spirit. Because he's going to verses 19. That life will spring forth with singing. That life has no choice but to sing. That life has no choice but to give God the glory. That life has no choice but to praise this God who has called it to live uh, in such a way. Uh, Because the opposite is equally true. Right? Uh, can you see there in all those verses, Paul basically says, this is how you should do stuff, and this is how you should not do certain things. Right? Uh, if, if we take it from the bottom there in verses 18, he says, uh, do not be drunk with wine because that is debauchery. So that is compared or contrasted to being filled with the Spirit. So if you're filled with wine, just like the example of the uncle who comes from the tavern who's singing, uh, he's filled with debauchery. What is debauchery? Um, Sexual immorality, drugs, alcohol. Uh, If that's the life that you have and that's the life that you're going to live, that life is going to lack the understanding of the will of God. Why? Because it's it's drunk. It's unsober. That life cannot see clearly because it's filled with alcohol alcohol with drugs with sexual immorality and that life fails to understand the will of God and if it fails to understand the will of God then that life cannot make the best use of the time and if that life cannot make best use of the time then you will live unwisely and if that's the case there's nothing for you to sing about there's nothing for you to sing about because that life does not bring glory to God instead that life will be burdened by all its sins That life will be burdened by the cares of this world. That life will be burdened by the darkness that's surrounding it. That life will be choked. That life will not have wind to sing or words to sing. And so it's important for us as Abba Zalwani to look how we live, to live wisely, to make best use of the time, to understand the will of God, to be filled by the Holy Spirit. So even as we come together, we can sing with confidence, Abba Amen. Amen. So be careful how you live. Because a life that's lived in Christ and for Christ is a life life that flows with singing. It's a life of wisdom. You might be asking yourself, what is wisdom? Again, it's the practical application of knowledge. What knowledge? It's the knowledge of the good news of Christ. Verses chapter 1 to chapter 3. What do we know of Jesus? What do you know of Jesus as you sit here today? As Paul is calling us to look at how we live carefully because of the knowledge that we have of Jesus. What knowledge do you have of Jesus? Which Jesus are you worshipping as you sit here this morning? Are you worshipping a personal Jesus? Jesus who called you personally by name. A Jesus who calls you to submit under him. His will, his ways, his agenda. Or are you living a life that's unwise and you're worshipping a personalized Jesus? A Jesus you've personalized according to your preferences of how you see the world. Is that the kind of Jesus that you're sitting with? A Jesus who succumbs to your rule? A Jesus who is a slave to your personality and your preferences? A Jesus who allows you to live however you want to live? A Jesus 
who ultimately chokes your voice so that you don't sing. That's a personalized Jesus, but a personal Jesus is the Jesus Paul speaks with, speaks about. What Jesus are you worshipping? What Jesus is ruling in your heart as you sit here this morning? If it's a personal Jesus, then Paul says, because of that knowledge, he will help you to redeem the time. What are you, why are we redeeming the time? He tells us there, because the days are evil. The world is full of darkness. Everywhere we look, it's full of darkness. And so God does not leave us here so that we can just have the best time of our lives. But he leaves us here so that through us, as a church, he can go redeem other people. So we need to make best use of the time. That we are pushing against the kingdom of darkness with the kingdom of light. That we are going out in the world. And how we live, how we treat each other, how we treat our spouse, our children, those around us. Are we pushing back against darkness? I hear other people say, uh, you know, this thing is boring, man. Like, you guys, you guys seem so uptight. Right? Um, one, they don't understand what true life is. Um, but it's sad when Christians themselves say that. But the only reason you would be bored as a Christian is because you stopped doing what God has called you to do. There's nothing boring about pushing back against darkness. Amen, somebody. There's nothing boring about bringing change. There's nothing boring about rewriting stories that and narratives that we believed our, about ourselves that are given to us by a broken world. There's nothing boring about that. There's nothing boring about living a life of light and a life that's going to bring change in the world around us. And if it's true that we're going to redeem time again, how do we do that? Well, we do it by understanding the will of God. Um, what's the will of God according to Ephesians? You can jump over to chapter 1. Paul gives us a very clear definition of what the will of God is. Chapter 1, verses 22 to 23. Um, for the sake of time, I would have read from 15, but, but 22 to 23 gives us the gist. And it says, and he put all things, this is God, who's putting all things under his feet, the feet of Jesus. And he gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And so, and so that's, that's, the, that's the will of God, that God is, is moving everything in one singular direction. All of history is moving in one direction. What's that direction? To be under the feet of Jesus. For Jesus to be the head over all. Can you see how many times in those two verses the word all comes up? Right? He puts all things. So Christ is head over all things. And Christ who fills all in all. All of the world is moving in that one direction. Us as a church, you as a believer, all that you do, whatever ambition, whatever dreams you have, however you live your life, all of it is moving in that one direction to be under the head of Christ, under his feet rather, and for him to be the head of all. And so whether we like it or not, whether the world accepts it or not, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. And so the question that Paul is asking, if you are going to live a life that is full of the will of God and understanding the will of God, are you going to do it willingly or are you going to fight him? But even if you fight him, all of history is moving in that direction anyway. So give your life willingly to him now. Give your ambitions, your dreams, your desires to him willingly now. Because all of history is moving there anyway. For us to understand that, Paul says we'll be, we need to be filled by the Holy Spirit. And what he's saying here is this, this filling of the Holy Spirit is not just the knowledge in our head. Amen? Amen. It's not just the knowledge in our head. We don't sit and just regurgitate a bunch of facts about the Holy Spirit to say that we know the Holy Spirit. But we need to feel the Holy Spirit in our hearts. We need to see Him in our lives. We need to experience Him in our daily activities. How do we know that we're experiencing the Holy Spirit in our lives? Because one of the primary jobs of the Holy Spirit is to point you to Jesus. Are you seeing Jesus more and more in your life? That's how you know you're experiencing the Holy Spirit. Are you seeing Jesus in your relationships? 
Are you seeing Jesus in how you handle your money? Are you seeing Jesus in your workspace? Are you seeing Jesus in the community around you because Jesus has placed you there? Is the Holy Spirit working in you? Are you seeing his hand everywhere that you are? See, the emphasis that Paul is making, the emphasis that I'm making about singing, is that this is a life that's worthy to be sung about. This is a life where singing springs forth, a life that is full of Christ, a life that is lived in Him and for Him, a life that is saturated and and soaked in the cross of Christ. That's a life where singing springs forth from, because this kind of life gives glory to God. Amen. Amen. So is your life full of Jesus? Or are you singing from an empty place? Is your life full of Christ? Are you dry? It's a hard season. Maybe because again, from yesterday's talk, there's a lot of storms in your life. Um, and I would even encourage you then, let that fill yourself up again. Sing. We used to see Abokoko every Thursday going to Ntandas. They would stand there for hours just singing. And as a kid, you wouldn't understand. But that's what carried them. When they were empty in the desert place, when it was tough, they sang truths about this God who has saved them. But their lives could also spring forth that kind of singing because they were living wisely making the best use of the time, understanding the will of God, being filled with the Holy Spirit. While you're sitting here, you're empty because you've lived unwisely. You've quenched the Holy Spirit. Paul says that we must not grieve the Holy Spirit in chapter 4 of Ephesians. Have we grieved Him? Because we love our sin more than we love Jesus. And you can't even sin. Where are you? First reason we sing because of life. Second reason we sing because we want to give thanks. Verses 20 till 21. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. Giving thanks always. Uh, this is Ephesians 5, 20 uh, to 21. Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So what those verses say to us is that we sing as an expression or a demonstration of our gratitude. We want to give thanks. That's why we sing. What are we giving thanks for? We're giving thanks because of the gospel, the good news that Jesus has saved sinners like us. That's why we sing. But we also sing because we are thankful for one another. We are thankful for each other. No Christian is an exclusive island. God does not save you so that you can be in isolation. That's where Satan thrives. That's when he gets you. That's when your sins burden you. That's when you are overwhelmed when you are alone. But God has saved us into a family. God has saved us into a community. God has saved us so that we are a holy nation of priests together. God has saved us so that we have brothers and sisters around us. So we sing, Bazalwana, for each other. You sing in gratitude for the person who's standing next, next to you. So as you're standing and you're singing on a Sunday service, you are singing one first primarily to God, but you are grateful that you have a brother or a sister next to you. Your singing encourages them, but your singing is also a demonstration of gratitude and thankfulness to God. But God, you gave me a brother, you gave me a sister, you gave me mothers, you gave me fathers. I'm very grateful for all of that. And so we sing again in thanksgiving for having a Christian family. We sing to encourage and strengthen each other. We sing to grow, to grow one another. And that's why, that's why we sing. Amen. 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 So again, even if the person sitting next to you happy, let's pray. I sing in your, in, in your worship to the Lord to help this joyful noise that's happening next to you right? and be grateful to the Lord. Um, yesterday again at the men's conference, Thomas, who was the second speaker, uh, was standing next to me. And that man has the most amazing voice ever. 
Um, I mean, you heard him when he preached, but when he, he was singing, I felt like there was a lion standing behind me. Um, and me and my skinny self, I was encouraged to sing even louder. Because um, I was just like, <laughs> and I just sang. Right? Um, and and I, told, I told some of the men in our church after the, the singing yesterday, and I, I have to confess and maybe throw my church under the bus, um, but when we sing on a Sunday, I see my soul, so, yeah, so, yeah. But I love them, and they love me, and we're good, right? Uh, but yesterday, I went to the men in our church, not my faith, ah, Sunday, you can't sing like this. Yesterday, the ground was reverberating, the ground was moving, the walls were shaking because of how all those men were encouraged to sing together. And it was such a beautiful thing to hear men singing at the top of their lungs, unembarrassed. Even white guys who never sing at church. <laughs> but yesterday, they were singing. Why? Because their brothers as well next yes. to them were banded to, together in arms, encouraging them and the spirit in them to move so that they could sing. So I told them, please don't rob us. Sunday, please. Right? But that's why, that's why we sing. Right? We encourage each other. Um, and we are scared to love the Lord more. We are scared to care. Um, even if we're outside of the formal setting of church. But we sing to encourage each other. Right? It, it, it might sound like a strange and a weird thing. Let's call up your brother or your sister over the phone. <laughs> to encourage them in the day right? Uh, and the more we do it the better it becomes uh, but just to hear that there's somebody next to you singing who's encouraging you and caring for you I think it's important and lastly as, as we close let's look at verse 19 to see exactly what Paul uh, is saying about singing he says addressing one another so this is that thing again singing is for addressing one another Right? It's not just for me as I sit and I, I, I sing at church or as I stand, but it's for the addressing of one another. We do that in songs. Right? So he's talking about the biblical songs. Uh, we sing those songs. Uh, but then he also speaks of hymns. And those are, are songs that have been archived in church history that we passed on from generation to generation. We sing those those songs, right? There's there's, there's Kosa hymns, Zulu hymns, Venda hymns, uh, Tswana hymns that that are very theologically sound, that that point us to Jesus. We need to sing those. And I would even dare to say, that here's a call from this passage. We need to be writing hymns for the next generation. We need to be doing that. If God has gifted you with the gift of writing, but write hymns for the church. Right? We, we have prayer books right now, Bazalwad. Those prayer books are from the 1800s. When I give them to some of the, the teenagers at our church and they read that, they, they just can't even connect. Uh, the truth is there, but the language was written for a culture that's 100 years past. Now God has given us the Spirit. Write hymns. They're there. There's psalms that we find in the Bible, but there's hymns that we need to be writing to pass on to the next generation. And Paul then goes on to say spiritual songs. What are those? Those are contemporary songs that we sing. Uh, Songs that would not classify as a hymn, but some songs that we know that point us to Jesus, that we listen to of our favorite artists. Uh, Let us sing those songs. Those songs are encouraged for us to sing them as we address one another in them. And he continues to say, singing and making melody to the Lord which is the first part we sing again because of the life that Jesus has given us, this life that we have in him. We are singing gratitude back to him, praise back to him. And he says it, do it uh, with your heart. And I was glad we sang that song, uh, Heart of Worship. Um, And that's what this heart is, the heart of this passage. It's the heart of worship. We do it with our heart. Um, Not necessarily us putting on a performance, not us... Uh, showing off, uh, but God sees our hearts. What's the posture of your heart as you are singing? Um, and so singing is prized very highly by the Lord, again, because it expresses gratitude and uh, gratitude for our salvation and gratitude for each other in its fullest. Why? Because when you sing, all of you is engaged. 
See, when you're talking, your mind is engaged, your mouth is engaged, um, but other things might not be engaged. But a- as you sing, it's, it's as if all of you, your heart, your mind, your soul, your body, all of it is working simultaneously. That's the power of singing. That's the power of music. Listen to what uh, Hitberg says. He says, words make you think a thought. Music makes you feel a feeling. But a song makes you feel a thought. I'll say that again. Words make you think a thought. Music makes you feel a feeling. But a song makes you feel a thought. Because all of you is engaged as you sing and that's why Paul says that's, a, that's part of a, an important part of how you live out your salvation because when you're singing all of you is engaged music is powerful song is powerful and God gives us that as a gift to grow us and to grow each other and for us to remind ourselves of the importance of what the gospel is uh, listen to what Calvin says. He says, music, John Calvin, who's a famous theologian, music has a secret and incredible power to move our hearts. When evil words are accompanied by music, they penetrate more deeply and the poison enters as wine through a funnel into a vet. And the opposite is true. We write, we sing music that's saturated with the truth. Music is a tool that penetrates more than anything can, deep into the crevices of your soul. So why not fill our hearts? Why not fill our souls with the truth of God as we sing loudly from the top of our lungs? Amen. 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 Music is that powerful. And, and Paul here says again, he's not limiting us. Sing uh, songs, sing spiritual songs, sing hymns, whatever it is. But let those things reflect Jesus. Three things, and I'll close. Uh, what are these three things that are supposed to reflect Jesus? What is Paul saying? The kind of music that we're supposed to be singing is supposed to, to, to be shaped by truth, goodness, and beauty. Right? Uh, truth is the truth of Christ. Right? Our music needs to be saturated with the truth of Christ. Because again, whatever other truth we put in that music will penetrate deeply, it will shape us, and we'll become whatever it is that we're listening to. So are we listening to the truth of God, the truth about the world. So we can't just listen to music that's only giving us good feelings, only, because that's not the reality of the world. We need to sing music that makes us reflect on the sorrows that we have, that the depth of our sin and how weighty it is, but at the same time music that points us to the truth of who Christ is. Goodness, it's music that needs to fill our consciences. That's what goodness is. It's music that gives us hope. Yes, things might be bad now. Yes, I might be struggling now. Yes, I might be in a season where it's dry. But does this music point me to a a better hope, a better future? And lastly, music that has beauty in it. Why? Because beauty uh, awakens our imagination. And once your imagination is awakened, then you can then try and think of ways of how to change the world around you. Uh, So do we have music that stimulates our imagination? Music that is beautiful. Music that helps us come out of our our depressions. Music that helps us to come out of our disillusions. Those three things. And those three things are important because that's who Jesus is. He is truth, he is goodness, and he is beauty. That's who our Lord is. And so the thought that I want to leave us with this morning, are we going to sing music about Jesus? Because Jesus has filled our hearts. Are we going to sing music to each other that reminds us the cross of Christ and what he's done for us and the good gift he is to us music that's going to stir us up to live lives that are differently music that's going to reverberate throughout the township so that everybody knows that there's people who are saved people who can't keep their mouths shut because they have new life they have true life they have light in them is that the music that we want to sing I don't have a beef namapiano but that can't be your full diet. Mm. As a Christian, mm. you have better music to sing. Yes. As a Christian, you have true music to sing. Mm. As a Christian, you have good music to sing. So don't neglect to meet, don't neglect to sing, even in your personal space. Praise the Lord.
Amen. 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 Let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, you are indeed the greatest reason for why we should be singing. When we think about how you've laid your your life on that cross more than 2,000 years ago. Father, that just screams back at us that we have no reason to keep quiet. So I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would again work these truths in our heart. Help us to live lives where we can have an understanding of the will of God. Lives that make the best use of the time. Lives that are lived wisely. So that we can sing confidently. Thank you for the gift of music. Thank you that it is such a precious and sweet thing to the soul. Thank you that this gift is is good when used in your hands. So we pray, Father, that you would help us as fellow believers, as brothers and sisters, uh, that we may not neglect to sing. Not think that we should have perfect voices or anything like that, but to sing with the joy that comes from our salvation. And so I do pray that you would be lifted as we sing to you. Amen. 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 Amen.